It's a special treat when your travels take you over one of these treasures. Some take a road trip just to pay them a visit. The floors of these bridges have to be replaced probably every 25 or 30 years. Jim Garvin has been studying New Hampshire's covered bridges for years. We have some of the oldest and some of the newest. We have some of the longest. We have some of the shortest covered bridges in the United States. The Cornish Windsor stretching over the Connecticut River is said to be the longest wooden covered bridge in the U.S. and the longest two span in the world. Oh, it's an elegant and wonderful bridge. And it's a National Historic Engineering landmark as well. Bath is home to three covered bridges, including the state's oldest. The Haverhill Bath dates back to the 1920s. The Ashwilet in Winchester is considered the state's most elaborate. One serves as a gift shop in Bartlett, and the most rare, four surviving covered railroad bridges. The Kentuckook is the world's oldest. The one at Clark's is the only one still in use. There are only about eight of those left in the United States and none anywhere else in the world. Over the years, the biggest threats to these beauties have been fire and flood. In Conway, the water rose so high back in 1869 that a raging swift river actually ripped the bridge that stood here off its abutments and swept it downstream, where it smashed right into the Saco River covered bridge. Both were destroyed and, like so many others, rebuilt. They have become an icon. They've become a symbol of not only nostalgia, but also American ingenuity. Many covered bridges are still standing thanks to this man, Arnold Grayton of Holderness. He is the most experienced covered bri bridge builder in the United States, and his knowledge, he knows his knowledge, can save things and can save these pieces of history. And while he can still impart that, he tries to do that. Even battling cancer, when we met, this 83-year-old was getting ready to head to Kentucky with his crew to rescue yet another bridge on the brink of collapse. I just like to see a lot of the past preserved. We lose so much of our history all the time. He's good at taking on more than what one man should. <laughs> Arnold learned the craft from his father, Milton Grayton. For decades, the father and son team repaired many a covered bridge damaged by weather or wear from vehicles that in some cases were well over the weight limit. You have to know how to lift them into place in small spaces, these huge timbers, and to take them apart. And, and that's what Arnold's good at. He knows how to take them apart, so he's amazing. The Graytons also constructed new covered bridges using the old methods. When they built the one in Henniker back in 1972, oxen were brought in to help pull the trusses across the Kentuckook. Sometimes people just come by and want to help for a few hours just to say they worked on that bridge. The last one they built together, the Squam River Bridge, was dedicated to Arnold's father in 1990. He still was able to found some trunnels, you know. A bridge like this is held together with thousands of trunnels or wooden pegs, each one hand carved, just like the old days. It's best if you trim them on the lathe right at the time you're installing them, so to get them just the right fit, not too tight, not too loose. You feel kind of a responsibility um, when you're doing work like this to try and do it traditionally. Yeah. Much of their work is still being done using antique tools. Well, we have some machinery, you know, because yeah. the world won't wait for you to do it all by hand, you know, so you have to use some to be practical, you know. Bill Caswell and his wife head up the National Society for the Preservation of Covered Bridges, based in Hillsboro. Our goal primarily is to just raise awareness of the needs of the covered bridges to try and you know, make sure that they're maintained well. The couple organizes bridging tours across the state and country. It's when we're out on our bridge safaris that we'll 
you know, stand in the middle of the bridge and kiss and somebody will take their pictures and it's, it's, it's kind of unique. <laughs> After retiring, Stephen Brown made it his mission to photograph all of the state's 53 covered bridges. He's learned that getting the best shot often means taking a dip, even in winter. I just couldn't get the good angle, so I kind of went out on the ice, and I knew it wasn't deep. You know, it's and I went through and filled a boot full of water. One of the state's most photographed is in Stark. It's both beautiful and well-known and picturesque. It shows up in calendars and New England uh, picture books of all kinds, but it also has had a lot of love and a lot of engineering attention over the years to keep it going. Each one is a pathway to the past that many hope will weather the passage of time for decades to come. We live in a very fast-paced, throwaway world. You know, you build a concrete and steel bridge and it's gone in 50 or 60 years, and this will sit here for another 100 if it's taken care of. They're just beautiful. It's a beautiful piece of history that our younger generation should really be involved in saving. Mm -hmm.